Hi guys, this is Ana Cortez here. Um, I haven't made a video in a while, but um, lately I've been getting super stoked about geomancy as it combines with card reading. Um, this is something that I've been into since I first started learning cards back in the day, like too long ago to confess. Um, but I've been remaking some of the videos for my workshop and um, going more in depth and um, this area is just so unbelievably cool and coincidentally someone asked me to make a video on it um, when I was already thinking about doing that so here I am you know following the trail of synchronicities and um, if you don't know anything about geomancy, um, you know, I recommend it. It's, uh, I wrote about it in my book, The Playing Card Oracles. Um, there's a little section on geomancy and how to combine that with cards. Um, and I think it's pretty, you know, explanatory. It's the chapter, something old, something new. Um, goes into just a little bit of geomancy history and then um, these are what geomantic figures look like here um, you know and how to use it with your cards um, I've got like exercises and stuff um, and you can certainly just pick up a book on geomancy uh, this one by Nigel Pennick is a good one pretty simple you know, geomancy is simple, but you can go as in-depth as you want, or you can make it just a really um, easy part of your card reading practice. And if you guys know me, you know I use playing cards for my readings. These are my fancy playing cards. They're super, like, blingity bling, awesome. I love them. This is the most recent deck I published of my dad's artwork for playing cards. And um, just helps bring out the meanings, you know, already encoded into playing cards through the colors, the numbers, and the suits. But um, I want to talk about how to um, make geomancy with your cards. Um, this is like a new science, you guys. It's something brand new that my dad actually discovered um, cards create geomantic figures and um, people are copying me now copying my dad's work um, and that's cool but um, there's a lot of exploration that can be done a lot of creativity um, that you can express through combining these um, and it really is like a total um, innovation in card reading and in geomancy which you don't see in divinatory sciences too often um, both of these really old geomantic and cardomantic sciences um, having innovations so I just laid four cards out four random cards you know as I was talking We've got uh, the King of Hearts, and I'm going to write these on my paper. So I've got the King of Hearts. I just use my little own shorthand um, when I write these down. The Queen of Hearts, uh, Eight of Hearts, and Two of Clubs. Totally cool um, layout here. Really cool cards. Uh, and I lay them out like this. One on top of the other making um, a column of cards, you know, sometimes it gets a little messy. Uh, but you got to lay them out in a column if you're going to create geomantic figures with the cards um, in this way. I'm sure, you know, other ways are coming to my head right off as I'm talking, but this is the way outlined in the playing card oracles. It's one of the most uh, logical ways to do it. So, um, in geomancy, if you're not familiar with it, you make these little figures um, that are, are made of four 
different parts. That's why I have four playing cards laid out on the table. And historically, in geomancy, um, you use odd and even numbers to make your figures. So every card has a number on it, and it's either odd or even. So it, it naturally makes a geomantic figure when you lay your cards out this way. So a king um, is an odd number. It's the, it's the 13th card in a suit. And if you count going up from, you know, the 10, which is the last number in most playing card decks, and then you go into the court, 10's um, an even number, then jack um, is a male number. It would be the number 11. Um, it's an odd numbered card. Queens are even numbered and kings are odd. So so I'm going to make a uh, single marking for an odd numbered card. Okay? And then the queen is an even numbered card, right? Because she's female. She's a number 12. And I'm going to make two markings for every even numbered card. An eight, you know, our next card here. Obviously an even numbered card. And then a two, obviously even numbered. And this is a geomantic figure. I can look it up in my little geomancy book, right? See what it is. Or they're easy to memorize because there's only 16 figures. There's only 16 possible combinations of odd and even um, when you make a four part figure like that. So I know that this one's called Letitia and um, she has certain meanings associated with her. So I could stop right there and I could use the meanings of Letitia, the traditional meanings, um, to supplement what I'm using in my card spread. So they should work hand in hand. You want to be really um, mindful that if you combine geomancy with your card readings, no matter what system of card reading you're using, you know, um, it doesn't have to be the playing card oracle system. You could do this, you know, using any cards because um, they have a numerical value, as long as they have a numerical value. But make sure they work with your geomantic meanings. So it takes a little creativity at first to, to combine geomantic meanings with your card reading meanings. And that's really where the art comes in. And there's t tons of ways to do that. You know, I've been working with combining these together for a long time. So, and again, it's a new area, right? Geomancy is super old, cardomancy is super old, but as they come together, there's a lot of room for creativity. This is sort of a new hybrid science. Um, but basically, Letitia means happiness. You know, outward expressions of joy. You know, stuff like that. Things going the way you want them to go. So I'm going to just keep that in mind. And already I'm looking at these cards and it's feeling, you know, like super joyous. You know, obviously there's a pair there between uh, these two court cards in the suit of hearts. The suit of, of love and emotion. Um, you know... All my interpretations, I would be careful not to contradict what I'm getting with my geomancy. And sometimes uh, the geomantic figure can actually point out cards in your layout to pay attention to. Uh, like this is one of the interpretation techniques I teach. Um, in the figure Letitia, for example, this one 
um, portion of my figure, right? This is my geomantic figure. Sorry, it's getting messy here. This top line of the figure or top part of the figure, which was an odd marking, a single marking, is different visually than the other sections of my geomantic figure, right? I mean, these are all even, and this is kind of stand out because it's the only odd numbered marking. So it, it's drawing attention to the card in that position. It's saying this card is more significant in relationship to the joy and the happiness that Letitia's pointing out. And Nicomaya, just coincidentally, you know, he's like drinking wine. This king of hearts is kind of a party king, is one of the possible ways of interpreting this card. He's like, you know, don't worry, be happy. He probably wrote that song, kind of king. So Letitia's bringing that aspect of this king out in this reading because of where he is in the layout, right? If he had been down here, it'd be very different. I wouldn't be looking at him in this um, reading in relation to this figure, but he was in the top position, which was standing out to me visually. I hope this isn't such a mess that you can't follow along what I'm saying. But this is just one of the ways to work with cards and figures. The main thing is, you know, let them work together and don't be afraid to be creative. And in my book, I also talk about how color in playing cards also creates a geomantic figure, not just the numbers, right? Because the deck is black and red and it gives that further possibility of odd and even um, creation of a figure. So in this instance, I would have odd, even, even. Uh, my next figure, according to color, would be the tail of the dragon, as it is called, or cauda draconis um, in the Latin traditional name for that geomantic figure. And this figure actually uh, signals the bottom card in my reading, right? Because this, this bottom position is very different than the top position. So I might look at this card um, in relationship to the meanings of this figure. And then in traditional geomancy, the two figures together combine and they make a third final figure. In this case, I have conjunctio. And again, I would use these to supplement my reading, or sometimes I calculate the geomancy and, you know, the reading's moving quickly. I might be doing a quick reading, or I might be really in depth in some of the cards and the geomancy will play in more or less depending on um, you know how the readings going what I'm paying attention to what's calling my attention but basically you can create I'll, I'll clean this up a little and I'll show you something cool this might motivate you to uh, start working with this more you can create something really super excellent to give to your clients. You know, if I'm calculating the geomancy according to my cards and I know how to do it, I've studied it, and I've gotten pretty good at it. It doesn't take very long, you guys. Again, I'm not going to go into all of this in this video because it would get super long. And it's already written of in my book, The Playing Card Oracles, which you can get the ebook at my site for cheap. You know, $6.99. You get like a 260 page 
ebook the section on geomancy isn't you know that long and you can see how to use it for yourself how to calculate all this but basically look what I made for my client and I can put their name at the top Sarah Jones and I can write a little um, synopsis you know um, uh, happiness leads to a final closure of a chapter in your life. I don't know. I'm just making this up. I haven't really checked this reading out. Um, a chapter in your life, um, something lost being found. Something lost is found. You know, I mean, it's just general meanings associated with these figures that I threw together um, here for an example. But you can see how you can create kind of a cool looking um, keepsake for your client and then sometimes I would staple my business card to this and give it this to them to take home um, I would also use you know like different colored markers and just create it as I'm talking to the person um, you know I would use a black marker for the black um, cards and so geomancy do it there's uh, a ton of fun waiting for you. Um, you know, geomancy has been printed on cards before. There are geomantic decks you can buy that are getting more popular now. But um, the traditional way of using geomancy is to create the figures using, you know, odd and even numbers, uh, that kind of thing, and cards create figures, so why do you need geomantic figures um, on the cards when uh, you know you already have what you need? So thanks for watching, and um, that's it for today.